Hey, welcome back. Thanks for uh, coming back again and joining me for another episode of the uh, Jupiter 2 model build. So this is a quick little mod I did. Right here in this area we have where the stairs go next to the elevator and it goes down to a lower deck. And I'm going to add a lower deck down there with some styrene like so and just build three walls and put a little light there and add some stairs extending down in there to make it look like it goes below. So I've got these three pieces of styrene cut out, back wall, two side walls, slanted for the bottom of the saucer. Uh, just glued them together like you see here. Then I'll uh, spray them with some paint, put stairs down the middle. And I'm going to use one millimeter brass tubing and build my own stairs. And the way I'm doing this is, as you can see here, it's painted. I built the stairs slightly smaller, each one progressively smaller and slightly angled as you can see here, to try and do a forced perspective give an illusion of it being deeper than it actually is. And I've also gone and just painted this area here of the uh, hull the same leather brown as the floor up above. And here you can see the two pieces together and it does give an illusion it looks deeper than it actually is. The stairs give that illusion of going down. And further down when I get to the point I'll try to fill in that seam and then I'll add a light underneath as well. Alright so moving on here we have the walls for the uh, stasis tubes as you can see sitting here. There's three of them that I need to build and uh, I'm going to paint them all and they have clear plastic that goes behind them and also in this area I have photo etch so I need to sand down and remove those sections and this is the photo etch panels here just like the main control panel um, they're gonna go over and there's little dots in there that uh, I need to cut out for so that light can come through so I'm just starting out here I've sanded them down and I'm starting to do holes in them so that I can cut out and remove the backside so here they're all done as you can see I've cut them out and uh, there's room there for all the fibers to come through into the photo etch. And the first thing I've done is I've sprayed the bottom edge with the Vallejo sand primer. Um, that's a slightly different color than the rest of the wall. Then I've taped that off and then I've gone and sprayed the rest of the wall with a Tamiya wooden deck tan. And in here is yet another color. So I'm painting the photo etch area is black and then I've taped those off and then I'm painting the remaining areas with the Vallejo green sky and we'll pull the tape off here and make sure it all looks good and there we go we've got our uh, four colors going there and these areas also need to be painted with some flat aluminum and red and I've gone and I've done that. There's also these photo etch pieces which go on the two side windows of each wall here. And I've gone and I've primed those and then sprayed them with the uh, Tamiya flat aluminum. And then there's these little pieces here which go in the center holes and these need to be painted a brass color. So I've gone and I've sprayed all of these with Vallejo brass and then they've all been inserted into the holes in the uh, photo etch pieces and then these are the clear plastic pieces that came with the kit um, I will be using those and my photo etch will just fit right on top of those so that uh, they can be easily mounted into the walls using the clear plastic pieces so here is the clear plastic wall which goes behind and the purpose for the clear plastic is because these walls will be backlit and we'll be getting to that here in just a bit but you got holes here for the clear plastic pieces to go in with the photo etch and so the photo etch pieces which are attached to those clear pieces will just glue right into these holes like so so we got all three walls done here all the photo etches glued into place and they're coming along and looking really nice then what I've done is I've gone and sprayed the backside of the clear plastic. I've just dusted it with Tamiya Fine White Primer. 
not a heavy coating but just a dusting and then I have this blue vinyl sheet from a third party which will go behind and stick to the uh, backside so that when light comes through it'll give it the illusion of being blue and I've cut out the pieces stuck them on the back here each one of these walls has a piece of blue vinyl stuck to it and you can see here when light comes through it gives it the illusion of being like a frosted blue glow and here we have the photo etch pieces which go across the top of the walls and I've gone and I have primed them and then I've painted them and tried to match as closely as possible to the decals which like the main console I will not be using because of the fibers and then I've gone and I've glued those all into position as you can see here so next up I'm ready to run my fibers and I'm going to start out by just putting my uh, 0.25 millimeter fibers through here I did go through the back side I'm just pushing some of them back in and I've got all my fibers run the 0.25 but there are three half millimeter fibers run in each wall in a section over on the left side and now it's time to go through and just snip all the excess fiber off the front and try to get it as flush as possible and I've gone and I've done that and here you can see how the fibers look and then when I plug it in to my trinket board it's going to run off the same LEDs as the main console so you get a varying blinking and here's how they look in place in the floor of the Jupiter 2 continuing on we have these clear wall units which connect to the wall and the floor and I've gone and I've primed these first with the Tamiya fine white primer and then I've gone and I've airbrushed them all with a Tamiya chrome silver and then they mount like so and here we have the stasis tube parts these are the tops and bottoms which I have painted all with flat aluminum um, these are for the static discharge tubes and here I have some photo etch once again which goes into the base of the stasis tubes so I've gone and I've added the photo etch and all this has been sprayed flat aluminum and this is the grill that goes on the bottom of the elevator which I've also painted flat aluminum and that goes in place like so to the base of the elevator on the floor so here we have the clear plastic tubes or stasis tubes uh, they're in two halves and they just go together like so and then they fit into the bottom of the unit we have this little top ring and then the very top goes on and you have your completed stasis tube and I have put a piece of paper in the bottom side of each one for light diffusion here I have some half inch styrene tube which I'm going to be using to make little light housings for the uh, stasis tubes and I've cut out little sheets of styrene to cap the bottoms so I can attach and put a SMD LED inside here and it'll shine up through the bottom of the stasis tubes. And here I've got my 0402 SMDs Elmer glued in place into each of the thin styrene sheets and then I'll just glue my half inch styrene tube on top. And for the elevator I have a water bottle cap here which I will be using for housing and I've gone and I've attached all of my stasis tube lights to the bottom this one I had to cut a little bit because there's a piece on the bottom that goes in here and then for my static discharge tubes those are more flush mounted and I have my board here that I made where I'll be running all of my positive and negative through for voltage and I'll be using this for many of my lights and then I also have my elevator one over there in the top and here's how they look when it's turned on so then I just go and I place my static discharge tubes in position 
and then we go and we put the uh, stasis tubes in position and with all those in place you can see how the back wall is starting to look and then we have the elevator section here this is the cage which goes around the elevator which I've painted with Tamiya flat aluminum and the cage just goes together like so with this ring on the top holding it in place Then we have the controls for the elevator with this little photo etch piece that goes in the front. So I'm going to be drilling a hole through to backlight the photo etch. So I've gone and I've cut out the uh, section here for light to come through for the photo etch. And I've sanded this down a bit. And this spine here on the back I need to remove because I'm going to run my wire down here for my uh, LED. And then I'm going to replace the spine with a sheet of 0.75 millimeter styrene and put it there at the same thickness. So I've gone and I've removed that little spine there. I've trenched out for the wires for my SMD as you can see right here. And then I have my little piece of 3 quarter millimeter styrene which will lay on top of the wires once those have been put into position. So I've gone and I have attached a 0402 SMD to a little sheet of styrene, as you can see here. And then I'll glue this piece of styrene into the hole on the back side of the control panel here, like so. And the wires will run through the trench that I have dug out in the back of the uh, control panel here. So I've gone and I've glued it all in position, puttied, sanded, added my styrene sheet, painted it all, and you can see here that I have a completed control panel. And here with the light on, you can see my LED works and it's shining just fine. In fact, it's quite bright. I will need to put some diffusion in there to cut the brightness down a little bit. So here's the photo etch. I've painted the front side with Tamiya flat black. And of course on the back side, like with everything else, I've used my Tamiya clear blue, clear red, and clear yellow to fill in for the uh, lighted buttons. And I've gone and glued that in position into the control panel and also painted the little notch and button up on top there. And here's how it looks when the uh, LED is turned on. So then we need to go and take the control panel and mount it into place and the wires will fit right through here. And this is just a dry fit, just for testing. This is not a permanent thing at the moment. But uh, just running the wires through there, putting the control panel in place into the floor. And then we have the cage which just slips over the elevator hole here and mounts in place. And there we have it lit up and operating. And then we put the uh, back wall just to see how it's all going to look together. And here we have the entire back area lit up. Stasis tubes, static discharge tubes, and the uh, entire elevator section with the wall back there and the lights on the back wall. So I'm very happy with how this is all turning out so far. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the video, and until next time, thanks for watching. Hey, if you like watching my videos, please feel free to give them a like. And so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, click subscribe.